Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and today is a happy, glorious day, fellas. We have news so good that I was actually crawling into bed when this news dropped. Um, I've had a long day, but here I am in my pajamas sitting at my desk recording this video because I'm so excited for the Rodney to finally be coming to World of Warships. We've had her sister ship, the Nelson in game, for quite some time. And in fact, this week, I made a video on the Nelson, and now I have to find another thumbnail featuring the Nelson because I think there's only that one uh, piece of art from the Lighthouse auction with the Nelson, and I don't know where I'm going to find. Probably just an in-game screenshot or something. But yes, the Rodney is finally coming. You know... I wouldn't have crawled out of bed for any other ship that wasn't like the Rodney, the Johnson, or the New Jersey being announced in this uh, this dev blog tonight, but here I am, so let's get into it. But yes, happy news, and apparently she's quite interesting the way they've got her set up. And we have some other sh new ships that have been announced in this dev blog as well, so let's go ahead and get on into it. Link to this is all in the description down below, so if you want to read along as I read aloud, uh, check that out. I will throw up any relevant images or artwork as we go through it, so let's get on into it. They say, new ships, close testing 13.2. Captains, we're now ready to share details about new ships being added for, for testing and update 13.2. Read on to take a first look at their gameplay features and history. So first up is the French cruiser Montcalm, which is a tier 6. They say Montcalm is one of the La Galassoneri class light cruisers. At the beginning of World War II, she operated in the North Atlantic and took part in the Norwegian campaign. In June 1944, Montcalm covered the Allied landings in Normandy in the Omaha sector. Later in the war, the cruiser participated in the liberation of of the southern France. I think southern France would suffice their wargaming. Montcalm is armed with nine 152mm guns with good ballistics, long range, and high damage per minute for her tier. Her torpedo armament is rather light with only two tubes per side which can be effective in special situations, drive-bys. In terms of consumables, Montcalm will supplement her main battery with the main battery reload booster giving her already lethal main battery an extra punch. She will also have access to the usual hydroacoustic search or DFAA consumables in one slot. While her base speed is relatively low, she will also not have access to the engine boost consumable compared to most French cruisers. To have the greatest impact in battle, captains will need to put Montcalm's main battery to work. To this end, she will be best played at longer range because of her low speed and overall low survivability. Her main battery real booster will allow her to put out heavy burst damage and take advantage of enemy damage con cooldowns. At close range, enemy battleships and cruisers will make short work of her, so be sure to take advantage of island cover. Additionally, Montcalm will also be played effectively behind friendly destroyers using their smoke screens to block enemy vision. So a more long range based La Galassoneri, apparently here with the Montcalm. Okay, interesting to see how that works out. Um, it's going to have a lot to do with, my opinion, at least how good those shell ballistics are. I haven't played the La Galle in some time. I mean, I grinded up the French cruiser so long ago, I can't even remember. I think she was just kind of like an okay cruiser um, from what I remember my grind through her as. So, okay, you know, a new La Galle, I that's always interesting, right? So, we'll see how she does. Alright, next up is British cruiser Orion 44, another tier 6. Orion, a Leander-class light cruiser, spent most of her combat career in the Mediterranean. She took part in the battles of Cal oh God, Calabria and Cape Matapan, the battle for Crete, the defense of Malta, and covered the Allied landings operations in Sicily, Italy, southern France, and Greece. Quite a storied little cruiser here. In June 1944, on D-Day, the cruiser Orion had the honor of being the first to open fire on enemy positions in Normandy. That's where that name sounded familiar from. Okay. Orion 44 is armed with eight 152 mm guns and one quad torpedo launcher per side. As is typical for British light cruisers, her main battery will only fire AP. However, compared to her sister ship, she will have better ballistics and increased AP shell penetration, but she will deal lower damage per minute. Her torpedo constitutes a viable secondary armament. Combined with Orion 44's good concealment, their low visibility and long range makes them an excellent stealth weapon. Okay. 
In terms of consumables, Orion 44 will be 44 will be geared for the open waters. Specialized repair teams will allow her to recover heavy damage, while engine boost and hydrocoustic search will allow her to juke enemy fire and dodge enemy torpedoes. Note that unlike her sister ship Leander, Orion 44 will not have access to smoke generator, and due to her low HP, weak armor, and poor turret angles, captains will need to be careful when engaging in skirmishes against enemy battleships and heavy cruisers. All right. I actually like the way this Orion 44 sounds, so again, it's been a minute since I played the mid-tier British cruisers, um, but them saying she has better AP performance on a class that has already great AP performance, that sounds pretty dang scary. Now, I'm not sure, again, because I haven't played the Leander and the mid-tier British cruisers in so long, if they have the improved AP pin angles and such. I believe they do because they are all, you know, AP only all the way up and down the line. So basically, like, supercharging the already turbocharged AP at the cost of the smoke generator and a longer reload. Okay, that sounds interesting. Sounds like they kind of brisb uh, brisbaned it because the Brisbane is, you know, it's an open water uh, Minotaur, but she does get HE. Orion doesn't get that here, just gets the AP with the further improved performance, maybe. But okay, that is something that I'm excited for, and I'm, you know, I'm actually, I didn't even know this was on this dev blog, but now I'm excited for it. So that's pretty cool. All right, and the main attraction, the Rodney. There's no image of the Rodney, but it's the Nelson. It's the ship you've been watching in the background for the past uh, six minutes now. It's that, but it's going to have Rodney slapped on the stern instead of Nelson, right? Maybe a different camel, but let's see what they have to say about the Rodney. The Rodney is a battleship with a unique layout in which all three main caliber turrets are concentrated in the bow. The sister ship of the battleship Nelson participated in operations in the Atlantic, Arctic, North, North and Mediterranean during World War II. HMS Rodney played a significant role in the sinking of the battleship Bismarck in May of 1941, which we did a full cinematic on the hunt for the Bismarck, which included the Rodney, portrayed by her sister, the Nelson, and contributed to the success of the Allied landings in Normandy in June 1944. I'm noticing a trend here. A lot of ships that, um, oh, they're doing a D-Day event, aren't they? Yeah, that's about right. That is 100% about right for the development time. It's about four months from announced to release in terms of these dev blogs four months from now it's june oh they, they are so planning a d-day event call me nostradamus anyway joining her sister ship nelson rodney is similarly armed with nine 406 millimeter guns however the turrets will traverse slowly and the main battery guns have poor accuracy at long range supplementing her main battery rodney will be equipped with the turning torpedoes as found on the british battleship line there we go these will have a short reload, very wide launch, launching angles, and deal very high damage for the ship tier, but she can only launch one torpedo per side. For her consumables, Rodney will be equipped with fast reloading repair party with her, her low base speed may be improved by her engine boost. There we go, because they did that in the hunt for Bismarck. They managed to push the ship faster than she was designed to travel, which is very cool they're including that in this game. In combat, Rodney will excel at close quarters combat, preferring to engage her enemies at short range. Similarly to Soviet battleships, her dispersion formula will afford improved accuracy at close range, but will lose performance sharply as the range increases. Thanks to her engine boost, Rodney will be able to get into the action fast, while her fast reloading repair party allows her to tank significant amounts of enemy fire. It's also worth noting that Rodney will be able to recover an increased portion of both regular and citadel damage. Captains may end up needing this as her citadel is quite vulnerable to enemy battleship fire. The model for Rodney is still in development, so for testing purposes, we are using another ship, Duke of Bronte, with settings identical to Rodney's. Just They're just going to rename a Nelson hull. So that's what I don't get. Like, they have the Nelson model in-game. I mean, for testing, you can literally just take the Nelson model, take the words Nelson off of the ship, and take the crest off, and it'll work. Don't see what they have to... Whatever. Okay, cool. It, we're getting it. I'm not going to complain about that. So... It sounds like they've linened the Rodney with the uh, increased accuracy. Well, I, I think Lynn actually has a standard battleship dispersion. It's late at night, right? But they've Soviet battleship the Rodney. I'm not too upset about that. You know, close in Nelson is very fun in my mind. So uh, let's take a look at that. Oh, her plating is 26 millimeters. Uh, so that's better. 
because the uh, the Nelson has 25 millimeters. And to to note, this is still a tier seven. The Rodney's still a tier seven. They did an up tier to tier eight. So 62,900 hit points, 19% torpedo damage reduction. Uh, firing range is the same as 18 kilometers. What's the reload time on the guns? 30 seconds, 1.8 sigma, 247 meter maximum dispersion rate, and it has the Soviet battleship dispersion f formula, so you know, you're going to get better dispersion. Well, tighter groups, I should say, at close range. Um, let's see, torpedo two. So again, two by one, four fifties per side, 29,000 maximum damage. That is insane on a tier seven battleship, but it's only one torpedo per side. What's the reload time? 40 second reload time. That's nice. All right. Um, so let's see the damage con 15 second run time reloads in 80 seconds. Uh, okay. The repair party. It runs for 28 seconds and heals 314 HP per second and reloads in 40 seconds. You get four charges of that. So, yeah, it's like the Massachusetts heal. And it gets the uh, improved, again, the, the improved repair ratio for your Citadel damage. And your, is it Citadel and standard damage? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, an increased portion of both regular and Citadel damage. Sweet. Engine boost, 8% engine boost for 120 seconds. So you get a two-minute engine boost there for an 8% boost. Okay. I am I am so excited for this. It may not sound like it because I'm friggin' dead tired, right? But this is awesome, guys. I've I've been waiting for the Rodney for an eternity. Ever since the Nelson. I mean, and many of us older players have too. Ever since the Nelson was added you know it's always you know when's the sister ship coming anytime a new class gets added in right and the rodney and the nelson are two storage ships two very 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 historically significant ships and i'm so glad that they're going to be in game because unfortunately given the post-war uh economy of the uk they weren't able to be saved well barely anything was able to be saved because of that sadly but now you know we get to interact with them in game take them to battle i think that's incredibly cool and i'm very happy that they're going first with this you know brawling concept for rodney that's going to be a lot of fun especially at tier 7 because you, you can still get away with that at tier 7 unlike higher tier which is another big reason why i'm glad she's a tier 7 and not a tier 8 uh matchmaking is kind of preferable to tier 7 right now because tier 9 ships they're getting sucked into super ship games so tier 7 ships are finding themselves in mid tier and top and top tier more and more now so that's a good good up in my opinion so guys that's it for this dev blog let me know what you guys think in the comments down below obviously i'm most excited for ronnie but you know orion 44 that was a nice surprise for me at least i'm very excited for both of those ships. And again, I'm pretty sure this is going to be like a D-Day event or something. Definitely with the Orion 44 and the Montcalm, uh, Rodney, since they, it sounds like they still have to, you know, work on the model. But I would think with the Nelson model in game, they could get it out in four months. But again, we'll see. But again, put money on a D-Day event, guys. Oh, yeah, of course. Duh. It's the, it's the, uh, <laughs> no, 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 duh. It's the, what, 60th and 70th? Or, oh, no, oh, no, no, Sea Lord, you're old. You're so old, Sea Lord. It's the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Duh. Duh, duh, duh. 1944 to 2024. It's the 80th anniversary. Yeah. We're having a D-Day event, guys. God, I'm older than I thought. I thought we were in the 2010s still. Okay. On that note, I need to go to bed now. <laughs> so, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and all that jazz. Hope you guys have a great Thursday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.